Church, here we go. church. Welcome to worship this morning. We invite you to sing along with us.
Jesus, have your way in me now. I open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you now. So do what only you can. Jesus, have For your touch in our heart, mind, soul, and strength today, we feel desperate for your love. We pray that you would just pour out your love in abundance upon us as we seek to raise up our love to you in praise. We are so grateful, Lord, that you've given us your Son, Jesus, to live for us, to die for us, to give us new life. Give us the faith to live into that new life fully, Lord. In this time of worship, we pray that you would open our heart, mind, and soul to receive whatever blessing you would choose to give us today. And then, blessed by you, go out into the world to be a blessing. Lord, touch us with your love right now. In the name of Christ our Savior, amen. Well, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's so good to see you. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. This, I don't know about you, I just want to say something real quick. I have no idea what to do. <laughs> right, so I'm wearing my mask this morning. I'm going to be a good example. And then I find myself shaking hands. So does this make sense? No. I don't know what to do. But I do know this. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be worshiping together, whether in person or or in our online community. We're so glad that you're a part of this. If you'd like to know more about St. Andrew's United Methodist Church, I encourage you, whether you've gone here for a lifetime or this is your first time to go to 
sa.church, that's our website, and you'll find all sorts of information on that page. We want you to know that everyone is welcome here. We love you. In the love of Jesus, we love you and glad that you're here. We are a community of faith, and we're trying to be a special kind of community of faith where we love God more. We get to know Jesus better, and then we go out with that love of God and that knowledge of Jesus and serve our community. And if you're looking for that kind of community of faith, you have come to the right place. I'm glad that you're here. Now, part of what we do goes outside the church. I mentioned we serve, we do. It's not enough to come and worship. We have to live that out in the community. And so we ask our church folks to just share what they're doing in our Be the Church. Let's watch that now. At St. Andrews, we have a goal that all of us continue to grow in our faith through loving God, knowing Jesus, and serving others. We can't do that by just going to church. We have to be the church. For the past six years, St. Andrews has been developing relationships with our schools and our community through our Bless Our Schools ministry. And this year, we're excited to be expanding this ministry to include more schools. Through this ministry, we strive to provide both student and teacher support throughout the school year in a variety of ways. We have big plans to be the church for these schools starting this fall, and you can help by supporting our back to school drive. Check out the weekly update or stop by the serve area in the rotunda to see how. In addition, as part of communion today, we have an opportunity to give a special offering to help support the Bless Our Schools ministry. You can give a gift to our Serve Fund by going to sa.church, texting SERVE to the number on the screen, or by designating a check to the St. Andrews Serve Fund. Thank you for allowing us to be the church in our community. And don't forget to let us know what you're doing to be the church. had a, a, a church member say, Bruce, you're gifted a lot of things, but you're not gifted at making announcements. So this morning I had one job to do, and that's to go from greeting everybody into the Apostles' Creed, and of course I forgot. So, so we're going to do that now. I invite you to join together as a community of faith in this expression of our shared belief in God. Would you join with me? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life everlasting. Amen.
All right, here we go. Last one of the series, Scorchers, Too Hot to Handle Bible Stories. So here we are. Um, before I get into the message and the scripture today, I have a couple of disclaimers for you. First of all, I grew up going to church every week. My family was not Easter and Christmas kind of people. My parents were not the type of people who made excuses uh, or said that the weather was too nice or too cold. Like, that's not how we did it when I was growing up. We went to church every, every week. Uh, and because of this, uh, I moved, not because of that, but I, I moved after high school to Ankeny, Iowa, and because of what my parents instilled in me, going to church every week, when I moved, I found the United Methodist Church in Ankeny, Iowa, and started going there most weeks. Uh, a year later, Tom and I got married, we found the, the, we bought a house in Woodward, Iowa, and we joined the, the church in Woodward, and we attended there most weeks. Now my point is, that I've heard many sermons in my life, and I do not think that I've ever heard a sermon on the book of Song of Solomon or Song of Songs. Now, I've heard a, a verse here or two in a sermon, but never ever an entire sermon on the book. So this week, I've done a lot of research and reading, and I hope that I can do this well. Now, if you don't know, the book uh, Song of Songs is all about love and sexual desire. This is probably why most pastors steer clear of teaching on this topic. Now, most of us, we can probably handle the love part, but the other part, the sexual desire part, that seems like a touchy subject to talk about for church, although I think Pastor Bruce did go there a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and, uh, and I know, for, for some of you, that this message coming from a woman might sound a little differently than if I was a man. So, here we go. So, this summer I'm taking a class um, in, uh, at St. Paul School of Theology, and the class is on worship. And over the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about uh, uh, worship and creating a worship experience by using your senses. And sometimes having visuals in order to make the worship experience meaningful. In my research, I just for, for today's message, I discovered uh, one pastor who, for the sermon series on Song of Songs, uh, as a visual, had a king-sized bed on the stage. Now, as you can see, uh, I am not that bold, and we will not be having any visuals of that sort today. So, Song of Songs is, is the ultimate book. Uh, think back to, to other phrases that we know, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Uh, in the tabernacle, we have the Holy of Holies. Well, this is the Song of Songs. And the book is love poetry. It's not about two lovers, but two lovers who share their passion and desire for one another through words. Now, the main voice is a woman, but the man has a voice as well. And there is a part where the friends are speaking too. So Solomon is mentioned a few times in this book, but scholars uh, uh, tend to agree that, that Solomon is not the author of this. Solomon is known for his wisdom and for being a great lover. He had hundreds of wives. So this is why Solomon's name is mentioned and attributed to this book. Well, Song of Songs is a very descriptive book. Uh, among the, the sensual parts of the book, there are sections where the man is describing the woman and the woman is describing the man. So we are going to read parts of these descriptions that are found in the book, not all of them, but some of them. And uh, we're going to start with uh, the woman describing the man. So uh, he says, uh, she says about him, the, the woman is describing the man. 
My beloved is all radiant and ruddy, distinguished among 10,000. His head is the finest gold. His locks are wavy, black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside springs of water, bathed in milk, fitly set. His cheeks are like beds of spices yielding fragrance. His lips are lilies, distilling liquid myrrh. His arms are rounded gold set with jewels. His body is ivory work encrusted with sapphires. His legs are alabaster columns set upon bases of gold. His appearance is like Lebanon choice as the, as the cedars. Now, I think that uh, she did a pretty good job describing him. I think most men would be okay with some of these descriptions, like arms are rounded gold and, and uh, body is ivory work. I think, I think this, this, was, this was a good description. So now let's look at the other description, right? This is him, the man, describing her. How beautiful you are, my love, how very beautiful. Your eyes are doves behind your veil. So far, so good. Can we agree with that? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's keep going. Your hair is like a flock of goats <laughs> moving down the slopes of Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of shorn ewes that have come up from the washing, all of which bear twins, and not one among them is bereaved. Your lips are like a crimson thread, and your mouth is lovely. Your cheeks are like halves of pomegranate behind your veil. Your neck is like the Tower of David, built in courses. On it hang a thousand bucklers, all of them shields of warriors. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle that feed among the lilies. Now, I'm not sure the man did quite as well describing I mean, I don't know how many women would, you know, your teeth are like a, a flock of shorn ewes. <sighs> I don't know. So on the high school mission trip a couple of weeks ago, I asked the youth in my van if there was any artist in the van, and uh, somebody said that they were. And so I said, hey, will you do me a favor? And she said yes before she knew what I wanted. <laughs> and um, so I sent her the descriptions, and I said, draw these draw these as described. And so this week I checked in on her and I said, hey, how's it going? And she said, you know, pretty good. I, 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 the man is done. So I'm like, great. So she sent over a picture of the man. That's pretty good. You got the long wavy hair and this is awesome. So then she's like, uh, she texted me and she's like, I'm having, I'm, having, I'm having trouble with the woman. Like, I don't know where to go with this. So I decided to Google, because somebody else has uh, come up with this picture. So here's what I Googled and I found for, <laughs> for the female. I mean, wow, I don't know. So we ask why, why is this book included in, in the Bible? Um, so in the NIV uh, study Bible, I found this. Uh, in ancient Israel, everything human came to expression in words, right? That's, that's the Bible, the Bible, these words. Uh, so reverence, gratitude, anger, sorrow, suffering, trust, friendship, commitment, loyalty, hope, wisdom, moral outrage, repentance. In the song, it is love that finds words inspired words that disclose its, its exquisite charm and beauty as in of God's choicest gifts. That is love, right? God's gift. So what kind of love are we talking about? So side note here, if you don't know about the Bible Project, I invite you to check it out. Just Google, they have a website, they're on YouTube. But the Bible, the, the Bible Project has, um, they have informative, accurate, um, illustrated synopsis of each of the books of the Bible and other topics that you find uh, biblical topic topics. So I watched the Song of Solomon one and I uh, took a screenshot of this from their video when they were talking about the interpretation of the book. 
and, and they were talking about uh, the Jewish tradition is that this book was written as an allegory. Like one of the characters represented God and the other character represented uh, Israel, the people of Israel. Um, the Christian t- tradition is, is similar, that, that they, they, they fell as an allegory uh, of the church, the body of Christ, the people, and of Christ. Um, then there was this discovery of more ancient literature uh, among the Babylonians that were in this same genre. And so most scholars now will agree that this is... Um, this is not written as an allegory, but rather it's about love and sexual desire between two individuals. It is love poetry. So love and sexual desire between two people is a gift from God. In some cases in our culture today, we've taken these things, these beautiful things, and we've turned them into something bad or wrong or awkward. So again, in the NIV study Bible, it says, God intends that such love, grossly distorted and abused by both ancient and modern people, be a normal part of marital life in his good creation. There is power and intensity in this kind of love. Love can be wonderful and beautiful, but it can also be destructive if abused. Now, part of the sermon series, uh, Bruce, a couple weeks ago, talked about Esther, and he talked about the king's harem. This kind of love that we're talking about in Song of Solomon is, is not the same as the king's harem. So this kind of reminds me all of what is happening in, a, in our culture today, and there are a lot of mixed messages out there, especially for our young girls. Girls are suspended at school for showing their shoulders or their midriff, um, but they're being fined for covering up too much. Now, I'm a a believer in in teaching our girls to, to love their bodies and that they too were created in God's image and that they should be able to wear what they're comfortable in. But I also think as, as a Christian culture, as a Christian community, we need to be talking. We need to be talking about God's gift of love and sex between two loving individuals and what healthy relationships look like. We have to be really careful not to shame our girls, but we also need to teach our boys too. And we need to call out men, especially the men in this room or who are watching. We need to call out men who, are, who we see or hear object, objectifying women. Now, I don't have time in this sermon to talk about the statistics of the violence and the harm that come from the exploitation and objectification of women Um, We don't have time for that, but I cannot not mention it when we're talking about this topic. And because this is such a a touchy subject, we have to wonder again, why is this in the Bible? God is not even mentioned in Song of Songs. So this is from the uh, Wesley Study Bible and it's at the intro to the Song of Songs, and it says this. And I'm reading this because I, I couldn't find my own words that, that, that sounded like this. It says, the song became part of the Bible precisely because readers felt that its depiction of physical human love is so beautiful and deep that, ex- that it expresses the love between God and humans better than any other document. Yet, even as the song expresses divine love, it remains a poem about the physical delights of human love. It affirms the value of physical human love in its own right. The song is not a manifesto for free love, nor it is a description of a married relationship. 
It is a fantasy that explores an erotic love and the growing personal commitment between the lovers as they overcome separation and opposition to their relationship. As such, it reflects an ideal of the love between men and women in general and mirrors the ideal relationship between human beings and God. Above all, this love is a gift from God. All kinds of love, whether it be uh, Christian neighborly love, uh, love for our family and friends, love between two lovers, God's unconditional agape love, all of it is a gift. And we cannot all say that we've experienced this type of love found in Song of Songs, but we've all seen it in married couples. We've seen puppy love turn into a mature kind of love between two people who, who still hold hands after years of marriage and they serve one another and they lift each other up with words of, of love and encouragement. When Jesus gave up his life for us, that was the ultimate act of love. And we remember it by remembering the time that Jesus ate with his disciples and gave us that new covenant. Christ's love for us runs so deep. And in turn, our love for Christ should also run deep. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for love in all forms, but especially for the example that you have given us. Mature us in our faith and in our love. You know each one of us individually and intimately, and you know what relationships in our lives need strengthening. Give us strength to forgive who we need to forgive. Give us courage to, to love our neighbors, to love our enemies, and to seek you with love in all that we do. And as we prepare to take Holy Communion together, remind us of your great love for us. And I say this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we move to the communion table, I will remind you um, that this table is open to all. Um, if you didn't receive one of these on your way in and you'd like to participate in communion, just raise your hand and we will uh, get you one of these. Would you please join me in the Holy Communion? Christ our Lord invites all to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Jesus is our host, and he welcomes all of us to join in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor. He proclaimed release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. He freed the oppressed and announced the kingdom of God. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. Through his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. 
you freed us from slavery to sin and death and gave us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Jesus is with us until the end of time. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Take and eat. Take and drink. Let us together join in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are so happy you chose to join us in worship today, and we hope you've enjoyed your time with us. We're glad you're here. Since the beginning of the pandemic, members of St. Andrews have been serving at the Abide Block parties that take place in North Omaha every couple of weeks. On Saturday, August 14, we'll be preparing and serving cinnamon rolls, fruit, and sausage. This is an excellent opportunity for all ages to serve, and we would love to have you join us. Head on over to sa.church to sign up today. A new school year is right around the corner, and we want to acknowledge and pray for our children, students, and teachers who are heading back to school. So on Sunday, August 8, we'll have our blessing of the backpacks during the worship service. We would love to see everyone who is heading back to school, students and teachers, to be prayed over by our church family. Our kids in Kidman worship that Sunday will come into the sanctuary at the end of the worship service and they will receive the blessing as well. We hope to see you there. Do you love working with kids? Then we've got a great opportunity for you. St. Andrews Kidman is looking for volunteers who are passionate about serving with children and helping them love God, know Jesus, and serve others. During the school year, Kidman volunteers will sign up and be a part of a rotation, serving one or two Sundays each month in Kidman worship. There are lots of different opportunities to volunteer, and we'd love to find the right spot for you. If you're interested in volunteering, you can reach out to me or go to the Serve page at our church website, sa.church. Again, we are so happy that you joined us today, and we want you to know that you're always welcome here. Please join us again as we seek to love God, know Jesus, 
and serve others. I want to just take a moment to say thank you to Pastor Mandy for that message today. It takes courage to say to preach like that, and so I just want to say thanks. And why don't you why don't you let her know that too? Yeah, it's. I also want to say I I have four daughters and three granddaughters, and it's important as a church as the church as Christians that we hear this sort of thing. You know, it is, isn't it? So I'm grateful to her and. Uh, and I'm also grateful to you, because uh, it's, it's hard sometimes to hear things. And, uh, but we're adults. Oh, there's some kids here, but we can handle these kind of discussions. And so I'm just grateful. I just thank you, Mandy, so much. Well, I also want to say thanks to you all. This church does amazing ministry in our community, and it's because of your generosity that we're able to do that. So thank you for your support of the mission and ministry work that God has given us to do in Omaha and really across the country and around the world. There are a lot of ways... Th- uh, to support the mission and ministry of the church. You can text to give, you can send a check-in, you can set up recurring giving online, all sorts of ways that you can support our ministry. But I just want to say thank you for that, for what you're doing. But as we say, as I say thanks to you, let's just also take a moment to give thanks to God. Lord our God, we are so grateful for the blessings you have given us and for the opportunity to return those blessings to your work. T- take the offerings that we give sanctify them, make them holy, and use them for the good of your kingdom. In the name of Christ, amen. Please stand and receive the blessing. As brothers and sisters in Christ who are joined together through communion, go into the world, join together for the sake of Jesus Christ in the transformation of our world, Go with God's blessing. Amen.